98 Test Wickets for New Zealand, a man of leisure and cricket pleasure. He tours the world calling and commentating and does it absolutely brilliantly. He is back with us. Always a warm welcome, Dooley. Thanks, mate. No problem at all, Marty, and I'm not suffering from man flu or, or any of those things that uh, you two have been been having for the last week and a half. So I hope you're okay. I hope you've recovered all right, my man. Um, all right. In that case, because of the snideness in the voice there, Lachlan, <laughs> please bring back the Simon Dool sick thing, which we play <laughs> whenever any of us are feeling a little bad. Okay, just listen to that. This was you leaving a message on the WhatsApp phone. Have we got it there? Yeah, we're, 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 we're five seconds away. Okay, so here we go. So the, this is, And this is one of the best voices ever that you've put on. This is when I'm ringing up and I'm telling the boss I can't come to work. Have a listen. Hey, Lachlan, how you, mate? Um, listen, buddy, sorry, man. Um, I didn't even get back to Marty. I've been crook as a dog the last few days and on antibiotics and trying to get over this bloody flu. Um, I hope you're all better. Um, and... Yeah, nobody else has uh, has got the, the dreaded lurgy over there. Listen um, to the sigh. If we can give it a day or two, it might um, um, might help. I mean, that's that's all right. good me know, God, mate! I tell you what, I'm in tears, Dooley, listening to that. <laughs> 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 that's the best. So anyway, oh. anyway, we're battling on, mate. Okay, so don't worry about us. Yeah, too. good, good, yeah. excellent. Love it. I'm worried because Adelaide, it started to rain last night and we had a revised target and we know that the last thing we need is rain tomorrow. Talk us through that match last night. India 184 for six and again, Coley just magnificent. Yeah, absolutely superb last night. Uh, I arrived in Adelaide just as that game was halfway over. So missed the, um, at the bulk of it, watched the um, highlights this morning and then I managed to uh, be at the ground to watch the end of it. Um, uh, look, it was it was damp. It probably... It should have actually suited Bangladesh more. Uh, when they went back out after the rain, they still had 10 wickets in hand. They had a revised target that should have been easier to get than the first target uh, was for them. And a wet outfield, a wet ball for India to bowl with. Everything was in favour of the batting side, but India found a way to claw back into that game and win it. So, look, it was it was a good performance from India. I thought it was poor at times from, from Bangladesh. And, and they let one slip that they really will feel like they should have um, they should have won. So India found a way again, and um, it probably just means that they're, they're through now, I would say. Yeah, but Dolly, you've been warning us all tournament. This is the nature of the T20 game internationally, isn't it? We saw England and Ireland. I mean, you, you will get banana skins. Yeah, you will, absolutely. And, and the thing is, these teams that have come through Group 1, uh, sorry, through um, Phase 1 of the tournament, they are good sides now. And the more they play international cricket, the more they play at these tournaments, the better they will be. They are no longer, they're not easy beats. And I, I'm, you know, I don't want, uh, we've got to find sort of better terms than, than, um, than some of the terms that are used for, uh, for, these, for, for these teams that, around the world that are ranked sort of 12 to 20. They're not associate nations. They are, we, we call them that because they're not full test playing nations, but they are damn good sides, some of them. And they have the ability, you know, on any given day, and because it's T20, and this is why I keep saying to you, Marty, one or two performances in T20 cricket can win you a game. Yep. A bloke gets 80 off 35, he can win you a game. A guy bowls four brilliant overs and gets three or four wickets, he can win you a game. Not so in a test match because you need everyone to stand up over five days. But T20, one man can take it away. Simon Dawl is in Adelaide. Crucial matches tomorrow. I believe, I, I, I always just kind of think that there's a, a twist in the tail, you know, just to me that it doesn't feel like our group is over yet. Before we get into the specifics of each match and everything, do you, what, what is your gut feeling? Um, I mean, gut feeling says that it, it's England and New Zealand that are going to get through and, and, and I don't see it being any trouble for either for either side, to be honest. But um, look, I know what you're saying, and, and it always seems like at this stage of the tournament, someone will have a performance. Um, are Sri Lanka capable of beating England? Yes, again, that's, that's a possibility. But I just think that Australia have too much to do. And if the results go according to the standings and, and the sort of the rankings, then it'll be in England, um, New, England and New Zealand who progress. Well, and, that, and that should be the case, given the fact that we smacked Australia out of there, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's, um, yeah, that's certainly the case. I think the, the fact that Aussie have been under the pump since losing that game and losing it absolutely, you know, 
massively. Pants down. That yeah. was their that was mm. their biggest problem. Pants down. Um, run rate gone. All of those things. New Zealand lifted their run rate to a point where you know they could afford to lose a game in the tournament and still make it through, and that's what's happened. Simon Dool is with us. Then, all right, the, I, I call it the Kane conundrum. And, and I also want to say to the audience that, you know, Dooley has been a good mate. We've been talking on the radio for well over a decade now. And just to warn you that none of these quotes are going to be taken out of context like, context like it past employers that I have been on, Simon. So feel free about that. The Kane thing, East Sodi comes out and with all pun intended to bat from yesterday saying that he's our best ever cricketer. I would say that Sir Richard Hadley might have something to say about that. But regardless, it's a great debate to have because they're both absolutely superb. A runnable... 40 of 40. He's copped a lot of criticism for that. Look, I'm hacking on him at, at, at all here. But when I watch him bat, he doesn't appear to be as free as he has been in the past. You look at Kohli and the way that he batted, especially against Pakistan. His bat's an extension of his arm. It's like he's got a squash or a tennis racket in his hand, isn't it? Kane's not playing that freely. But to up and down him in the order here now, is that a question worth considering? He's not fluent. Uh, that's one thing I will say. It, it was... Uh... And innings the other night that I thought was needed for the first 20 balls because New Zealand were, were, were under the pump a little bit. So the first 18 to 20 balls were needed from what Kane did. I was sidelined for some of it. Um, you know, we do this little sideline yeah, commentary brilliant. piece brilliant, now mate. as well. I love it. I love it. And I was down there and he still looked so at ease playing Mark Wood compared to anyone I've seen through the tournament. Okay. Now, now, Mark Wood, you know, bowling rockets at 150. No problem with that. Kane absorbed that pressure and for the first 18 to 20 balls of his innings, absolutely required. But the bottom line is, Marty, he faced 40 balls. Now, 40 balls is one third of an innings in T20. Wow, okay, one right. third. Yeah, now remember that? Me. Right, okay. Yep, yep. He scored He scored 22% of the runs required. So he batted 33% of the balls and only He's scored 22% right. okay, of the runs easy, required. Okay, your equation, yeah. So that's the problem. That is the issue. Once he'd faced those 18 to 20 balls, he needed to kick on. I heard Gary Stead talking about the partnership. Yeah, great. Fantastic. Partnership was brilliant. But one guy scoring at 100, the other guy scoring at 200, and that guy scoring at 100 needs to kick on after those first 20 balls. And he didn't do that. And that's the problem I've got with Kane at the moment, is it's just he doesn't look as fluent. We've seen one really good innings from him, I think, in the last probably six months, where he's been... Uh, well and truly above that 150 strike rate, 160 strike rate, and played really well. Is he? It doesn't make him a bad player. He's still, I think, New Zealand's greatest ever batsman. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say cricketer because I'm, I'm with you on the Sir Richard Hadley argument. You know, that's that's a debate that we can all have. But I think he's still New Zealand's greatest ever batsman, and probably, and you know, he'll still churn runs out. But there is an issue at the moment with how fast he is scoring and how much pressure he put on the rest of that order post. 15, 16, 17, 18 balls in that inning. So that's my issue with it. It's not about how he started. It's about how he finished. Uh, let's all play selectors for a second, or let's pretend that we're Coach Stead then. So if you did change the order, I'm thinking Phillips at three. I'm even wondering whether Mitch comes in at four. Would that be too much to actually to, 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 to rejig it like that? I think so. Um, look, I, I, I don't think you want to be moving it around too much. If, if, in, if anything, if you want to throw a pinch hitter up there, if you wanted to throw Mitchell Santner up there against Ireland, but, uh, you know, they've got enough pace. They've got enough pace to worry someone like Santner as well. But I just think, you know, uh, look, Kane's got an innings in him, and, and we saw that through. You know, he struggled that at the T20 World Cup last year in the UAE for for some parts. And then he, he played brilliantly in the final, mate. At times. Glorious and then that player. final came yeah. around, and, and, you know, we haven't seen an innings as good as that for, for a long, long time. I mean, Glenn Phillips innings, you know, was probably the next best thing uh, we've seen in the last year, the other night. So he he still has the ability. There's no doubting that. And he has got the, uh, you know, he's, he's got enough um, money in the bank, I think, to, to say we'll continue with him. And he's a very, very good captain. So okay. I, I, I don't see them changing. You know, I, I wouldn't ask them to change, to be honest. I just want him to be a little more aggressive post that sort of, that start, you know, he's dug New Zealand out of the crap in that so game, many times, and yeah. then he needed to kick on. Yeah, if I go back, I think he was eight off eighteen against Australia as well. And I remember watching that after um, Con uh, um, uh, Alan got us off to such a rocket start, and think, oh my god, he's dragging the chain. But then he actually. So what you're saying, and this is the most significant thing here: a runner ball 
isn't that good anymore as far as T20 goes. In one day cricket, you'd probably say that's fine, but you strike rate. But you need a strike rate up over 150, don't you? In the top three, uh, if you look, I, I always say this Basra. We use this Basra thing, right? You know, and I, I quite like it. It's the batting average strike rate aggregate. So I don't mind if you average 25 opening the batting, but you've got to strike at 140, 145, because a player like Finn Allen will end up in that category. He strikes at 180 at the moment. If he averages 25, 20, 20 to 25, striking at 180, I've got no problem with that because Basra is around 200, which is incredible. Yeah. Okay, so you're facing a lot less balls, but you're striking. So he gets us off to 40, off to 13 <laughs> balls, job done, no problem at all. You can't average 25 and strike at 120 or 115. You know, that, that's unacceptable behaviour in the top three. So that's that's the sort of thing that what I would look at. If you average 40, you strike at 125, 130, absolutely, because you're doing the job for your team. You're batting deep, you're averaging, you know, you're getting plenty of runs. So... That's sort of the, the permutations that I look at when okay. it comes to that. One day international strike rate of anything between 80 and 100 is, is sensational. But T20 cricket, the further down the order you get, the higher your strike rate has to be and the less your average will be. Top of the order, you want a decent average and a middle of the road sort of strike rate in that 130 to 135, 140 mark. A couple of quick questions. Will you go? I always thank you for your time, mate. In terms of his integrity, I refuse to even indulge in the argument. Uh, I don't think that he... He realised that he had dropped that ball the other night or just happened in a split second. I've had a bit of a Twitter war with people who say, oh, no, you know when it hits the ground. I give this guy every benefit of the doubt because as a person, he's the nicest guy that you'd actually meet that's ever held a cricket bat. You agree? No question about it. Uh, absolutely no question about it. Look, he even when he got up, he was a bit cheap. If he wasn't 100% sure, yeah, he right. wanted them to go upstairs. <clears throat> yeah. It was just the fact that Butler was happy to walk off. Yeah, that was, was crazy. Was yeah. More, the, yeah. more the point. Yeah. And, and, um, and, you know, when, when Kane got up, it, when the chest hit the ground and the ball hit the ground and then it popped back up into his hands, you could see the look on his face from the angles we showed, and, and he wasn't sure. I would never, ever, one for, for one second, question his uh, integrity. Okay. Um, a couple of things then. Um, being sidelined is just such a fantastic thing as a viewer, mate. I love it when they send one of you down there. It changes all your perspective as well, doesn't it? I mean, because you sit in the commentary box, yeah, you get the good view and everything, but what does it feel like when you're actually part of it, when you're actually there at sideline? Yeah, it's crazy. Um, you know, I said the other night, I <laughs> we used to have some, uh, talking to um, Michael Atherton actually, and the old, where he grew up and played a lot of his cricket in, in Lancashire at Old Trafford. They had, they used to have the um, the changing room side on. And it was a frightening thing watching the likes of, as he said, Alan Donald and, and Waka Yunus and, and Wazi Makram. And I was sidelined for that Mark Wood, for two Mark Wood overs. And my word. It was just Rapid. lightning quick. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've seen, I've seen, I've been at the other end. I've been 22 yards away from some fairly quick bowlers in my time. And you think about the Donalds and the Wakars and the Shoei Bakhtars and these sorts of guys. But um, they, he was bowling rockets the other night. And it was just a, you know, when, when you've been out of it for so long and, and you look back and you think, how the heck did we ever do that? How do you see uh, it? These yeah. guys are doing it, you know, they're doing it in their sleep almost. Well, we're time, expecting so them not just to do it. Nice we're expecting and... them to rock back, see it, pick the place they're going to hit it and hit it there. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh -huh. And then take six off it. So exactly. when you see some of the shots off the quick bowlers, you you are in awe. The crowd were magnificent the other night. Actually, it was a really, for a, you know, for a non-Australian game, um, the crowd were fantastic the other night. We, um, we've seen a little bit of that when the weather's been decent. And yeah, I like that. I like the inside of it. It's uh, it's not about just going down there and, and getting an interview or having a chat. It's about just getting in amongst the atmosphere and sort of feeling the game a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. And I'm I'm quite enjoying it. As a, the more I'm doing it, I'm I'm quite enjoying it. Uh, is, are Australia ready for their team not to be in the semis? No, no, they're not. I think um, look after the loss to New Zealand, I think. A lot of people are in and around Australia felt that that was a crucial game and that they were going to have to, um, you know, get some luck along their way to to get into the semis. But I, I you know, the, they're Australians. They don't like to lose. They don't like to come second or, or even third, which is probably the case in this group. And, and um, it'll be disappointment for them. And I hope it doesn't impact the crowds when it comes to semi-final, final time. All right, finally... And for everyone who loves their cricket, I mean, you've been, you get the chance to go to the MCG, you get the chance to go to the Gabba, uh, no whacker there now, of course, got that new, that new thing. But Adelaide, so what is it about Adelaide that you love, that that cricket ground I'm talking about? Well, I'm looking out my window now, I can see the church, obviously, the, the, you know, the famous church that is in the background of most Adelaide Oval shots over the scoreboard when you're looking from, uh, from inside the ground. The fact that they have kept 
history and kept sort of a, a part of what has always been the Adelaide Oval and that old scoreboard, but yet done it up to a modern standard. Uh, we're staying at the hotel um, right on the ground. So wow. the, the Oval Hotel is on the ground. So I walked down to breakfast this morning. I watched the New Zealand boys train out the window. Um, I'm looking out over the, the, the Adelaide Oval as, as we have a cup of coffee. And then I come up to my room and I'm sort of looking out over the park and the church and, and everybody that would be walking into the ground. You get paid for this. You get um, paid to do this. You call it a job. <laughs> I know, mate. I know. I Glorious, can't quite mate. believe it. Actually. Yes, brilliant. It is magnificent. All right. Lovely talking to you, dude. All the, all the very best. We'll be in touch next week, eh? Thanks, mate. Cheers, Marty. Thanks, buddy.